Hey all, and welcome back to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. I'm in Cedic, and it's just me on this video, I know. Kind of a different thing, but something where I just kind of felt like uh, I wanted to try this out again. Um, and also, I've been, I've been real bad at getting people, notifying people and setting up audio recordings in time, so this is like the night before I need to put this out. But uh, yeah, so in this video we'll be going to level 2 Canada, but first off I'm showing more customization of your skate deck. You saw you could change the grip on it, and again, all of those are unlocked from the start. All of the uh, non-professional skater specific ones, and then even each one that uh, a pro skater will have as kind of their signature. And you saw Chad Muska had the coolest, kind of like a art piece on his deck, sort of. Um, and I went with Steve Caballero's because that would also be noticeable on uh, seeing this video back. So yeah, we're uh, going to go to Canada in this video. Uh, one thing I didn't mention in the previous Tony Hawk 3 Gen 6 video is that, yeah, based on what skater you pick, your uh, five stat points and the location of the hidden board will be different. So like one block of skaters will have one, you know, location distribution for the stat points. Another block will have a different one, so on with the boards. I haven't looked into it to see like, oh, does that mean every pro skater has a, you know, unique location for everything? But uh, yeah, so like here are Chad Muska's, but these might not be where like Tony Hawk or someone else's are. Uh, so yeah, in Canada, in front of you is a skate park and um, like a parking lot, and that parking lot is a great place to test out your combos. You know, rail to ramp, revert back to rail for a bit. Um, and I want to kind of mention for this. Oh, okay, well first then, sorry, that uh, on the other on the other part of the level you get into kind of more of a natural area. Now it's still got convenient quarter pipes and half pipes and grindable rails and such, but it is uh, a different look to it, kinda. So balancing like that developed half of the level with this kind of more uh, open part of the level. And so, speaking about this level, I wanna point out that we actually mentioned this in the previous playthrough for Tony Hawk 2X, that in Tony Hawk 3, that Neversoft kinda drops the thing of really trying to base the levels on certain places, with some exceptions, like Skater Island is a real place. But some of the other ones that might be called out as like, oh, Neversoft is basing this on place, real place, is kind of nebulous, like here in Canada. Uh, the Tony Hawk fan game wiki says the level set at Canada Olympic Park in Calgary, Alberta, and some level elements are based on the Millennium Skate Park. I looked both of those up on YouTube, you know, to see some footage of them, and it was... I, I didn't see anything I could really place one-to-one. -one. It was more of like a, eh, maybe kind of thing. Whereas you compare back to what Tony Hawk 2 was doing and really deliberately, intentionally including real-life spots that you could really match. You could see, oh, yeah, you look up a picture of the pit from Venice Beach, and you're like, oh yeah, the middle part of the level is definitely based on that. So, for Tony Hawk 3 Skater Island, yeah, that's based on a real place. Uh, Los Angeles apparently has some uh, relation to real life, but I don't really see it in Canada. Maybe someone does, though, so if you can point to, like, a certain video or a certain part of a video, um, then feel free. Go ahead. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And so also what you're gonna see me doing is that, just for my sake, I'm gonna wait until I get, like, all five uh, stat points from a level to put those stats in. Because if I don't have all of them yet, I want to use the amount I can put in sort of as an indicator. Because you don't get an indicator for finding all stat points and the hidden deck. Obviously, you know, it'll say blank out of five for those, but, um, like, if you get those and then get the hidden board, it'll just say, found the hidden deck, and won't say, like, you found every, every additional collectible, like in the PS1 versions, where 
that final goal was to get everything. So when you did find find everything, you got that notification that you did. Um, and so then also in this level, in this video, I'm going to be showing off um, the uh, going between manuals as part of, I guess, the hidden tricks and also maybe more going in between grinding and maybe some going into lip tricks. We'll need to see. And I will have something I want to talk about then. But while I'm here collecting the new deck, I personally think that the new deck and maybe the stat points should have had something outlining them, something making them more noticeable, larger than life, especially with the with the decks and the hidden tapes. Sometimes they are kind of small and sometimes I will miss it if I just, you know, sweep look across the rest of the level looking for it. Whereas again, back in the older engine games, you'll see in Tony Hawk 2 and in the Tony Hawk 3 on the Gen 5 that like the cache and the, the, the hidden tape has kind of that glow around it and the secret decks in the Gen 5 version of Tony Hawk 3 uh, are bigger, you know, like large enough to, to really stand out against the background. But uh, yeah, yeah. Canada's Canada's interesting. It's fun, but kind of the uh, I guess sort of platforming nature of the uh, other part of the area where you need to go across the uh, wooden bridges and make your way up to where the hidden tape is can sometimes be tough to control. I don't know. I felt like I was having some control weirdness in just kind of trying this all together. Um, you know, like, and also for stat points, just while I'm kind of trying to talk about anything and everything, <laughs> uh, stat points, you know, I can't remember really think of anything where it's like, oh, you need to be at maximum speed for this part of this level. Like, again, to c compare back in Tony Hawk 2, some of the challenges you needed to do or jumps you needed to do to get cash and complete a level, uh, you needed to have, like, maximum speed and and jumping stats by middle of the game whereas in Tony Hawk 3 it's really kind of more of a smooth ride you can you can allocate your stats basically wherever you want um obviously more points into rail balance manual balance etc will let you uh go for longer on those though i i do feel like with the change to the physics system uh that balancing is I don't know, really know how to say it, but it again, like comparing engines in the previous game, obviously in all of these games, the longer you grind something or the longer you manual something, the harder it is to keep your balance. But it feels like with this new engine, uh, you will like lose your balance more rapidly. It'll become wilder changes. And so I'll get back to that, but uh, yeah, so if you have a signature manual trick, like Casper, Anti-Casper, Truck Stand, Handstand, if you have a special manual trick, you can do that and then combo into the other special manuals as long as you have special mode. And then in some of those, you can do, you know, additional tricks like a Casper flip, you know, do a quick little flip with the board. And as you saw there with lip tricks, you can also chain between the lip tricks. And how you do that with grinding, manualing, lip tricking is kind of a double-edged sword because you always use the uh, the vertices, the direction that you don't use for balancing to do that. So like when you're grinding, if you want to go into a different grind, you'll hit, you know, up, up triangle, down, down triangle. You don't have to hit left or right at all. When you're doing those special manuals, going into any other manual is left, right, or right, left, left, left. So it's a double-edged sword because you don't have to uh, mess with your balance to pull those off, which we've seen in other games and has always been annoying to have to deal with. But then at the same time, when you're inputting those, you are not controlling your balance. And that's where, if you're not controlling your balance, I find it easier in this new engine to lose your balance. Um, yeah, you'll see that where I can really pull off doing, you know, chaining a bunch of tricks together is when I've 
you know, really tried to control my balance and gotten it to where it's like right in the middle and, you know, stabilized the most and needs to start losing it again. Only then am I really confident enough to be able to do some of those extra things, which I really want to show off because I don't think I ever did those as a kid. Like, I don't think I ever realized you could chain manual tricks together and such in Tony Hawk 3. I thought that was introduced in Tony Hawk 4, but no. So, okay, that was Canada in Tony Hawk 3 on Gen 6. Next time, we're heading to Rio for the first competition level.